So yesterday's lesson directly flows into today. So we already did our homework. We already went over it. We should be all good. We talked about our absolute values. So what we're going to look at today is actually kind of the reverse of how we started chapter 7. So we started chapter 7 by talking about functions and operations on functions, where we added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. Today, we're going to talk specifically about operations on radicals. Yesterday, we only really focused on multiplying radicals and sometimes dividing. But we didn't do any division with addition or subtraction. So what we're going to do today is add addition or subtraction with our radicals. And adding and subtracting radicals are unique in the sense that they have to act as like. So radicals can be added and subtracted in the same manner as adding or subtracting variables with our monomial terms. We must have like radicals. So you can't add a cube root to a square root because a cube root and a square root are not like. To add and subtract variables, not only must the index match, but Radicand. So what that means is you cannot add the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 together. They have this same index and that they're both square roots, but their radicands are different because 2 and 3 are different. So 2 and 3 are not considered like terms when you're adding and subtracting radicals. So is the square root of 3b and 4 square roots of 3b like terms? Do they have the same index? Are they both square roots? Is what's under the square root the same? Then they are like terms. So then you would just say square root of 3b plus the square root of 4 square roots of 3b becomes 5 square roots of 3b if I were adding them together. So if you add the outside coefficients, the radicand stays the same. The square root of 3b and the cube root of 3b. They are not like terms because even though the radicand matches, the index does not. And same with the last one. Both square roots, but 2b and 3b are not the same. Simplify 4 square roots of 8 plus 3 square roots of 50. So at first glance, you're like, not my like terms. I can't simplify that. However, 8 and 50 both contain perfect squares. So you have to actually simplify each term completely before you can determine if they are like terms or not. So 4 square roots of 8 is the same as 4 times 2 square roots of 2. Because 8 is really 4 and 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So 4 square roots of 8 is really 8 square roots of 2. And 50 
15 is really 25 and 2. And we know the square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. So 3 square roots of 15 is really 15 square roots of 2. So 15 square roots of 2 plus 8 square roots of 2 can be added together because now my index and my radicand are like terms. So I end up with 23 square roots of 2. And if you wanted to like check on a calculator, you could do eight square root, four square root of eight plus three square root of fifty, and you get forty six seven ish, forty six and some decimals maybe. And then if you do twenty three square root of two, you would get that same number in decimal. So you could check them. But it will never help because our calculator can't actually help you. So our calculators are going to automatically convert radicals to decimals. And we can never have a decimal answer on adding and subtracting. If you type it, probably close to 46, maybe a little less. Like 44 points something. Alright, 5 square roots of 12, 2 square roots of 27, and the square root of 128. Each of those are divisible by perfect squares. So each of them needs simplified in order to determine if any of our terms are like. So 12 is 4 and 3, 27 is 9 and 3, 128. So immediately when I look at that and look at what they break into, I notice that the first two terms both have leftover multiples of three. So I know that they're going to be like terms. This is going to have a leftover multiple of two, which isn't going to be like anything else. So square root of four becomes two. Two times five becomes ten. So I have ten square roots of three here. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So I have 6 square roots of 3 minus 8 square roots of 2. So the first two terms are like. So I'm going to group the 10 and the 6 together and get 16 square roots of 3 minus 8 square roots of 2. Multiplying radicals is like multiplying variables in that we are going to add exponents together. So if you have a square root times a square root, that's really like one half power being added to one half power, which is one. That's why when you have the same square root times itself, it becomes itself. 
Just like adding and subtracting radicals like monomials, you can multiply radicals using FOIL or first, middle, last, or the box method. But once again, you have to make sure the index is the same. We cannot multiply yet a cube root times a square root. So we have two square roots of three plus three square roots of five times three minus the square root of three. So we're going to FOIL just like we did the binomials. So two square roots of three times three is just like yesterday. The outside square root stuff gets multiplied together and inside square root stuff multiply together. So this is going to become 6 square roots of 3. Outsides together, so negative 2. Insides together, so that would mean you get the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 which is like the square root of 9, but the square root of 9 really is 3. So again, the whole idea is if you have the same square root times itself, it becomes itself. Outside spend outsides, inside spend inside. We're going to treat the square root of 9 like the number 3. So I end up with 6 square roots of 3 plus 9 square roots of 5 minus 3 square roots of 15 minus 6. There are no like terms because you have no like radicates. Other than the final answer. Let's multiply again. There will be times where you have no like terms and no perfect squares underneath. There will also be times where you will have like terms or you will have perfect squares underneath and you will need to simplify them further. Yesterday, we talked about the fact that you could not have a radical in your denominator, and we called that rationalizing the denominator. Yesterday, all of our denominators were single terms, meaning they had no addition or subtraction. Taking this one step further or adding to it, much like we had imaginaries, you have something called the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate creates the perfect square to the original problem. So if you had x minus y, its complex conjugate is x plus y. That makes it so that the foil and foil cancel. It also makes it that if you have square roots, they cancel. The product of a complex conjugate with radicals will be a rational number. If you think about a rational versus a irrational, rationals could be written as fractions. They were nice 
round number. And here our round number was our pi, our i, our square roots of two, something with a non-perfect square. The conjugate will give you a perfect number. So if I have the fraction 1 over 2 plus the square root of 3, a square root is a no-no in our denominator. So we are going to multiply by its conjugate. The conjugate is the opposite of the second term. So we are going to multiply by 1, which means I have to multiply by the same thing on top and bottom. So the top is easy, you just multiply everything by 1 so it stays the same. The bottom needs foiled, so first is 4, outside is negative 2 square roots of 3, inside is 2 square roots of 3, and last is negative square root of 9, square root of 9 is 3, so you get negative 3. If you pick the correct conjugate, the middle two terms of foils could always cancel. Thus eliminating all square roots from my denominator. Giving 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 4 minus 3, which is 1, or leaving you with 2 minus 3. The top could have a plus or a minus in it as well. And then you would have to foil the top and the bottom. Just like now, my top has a number, so we have to distribute that number. It doesn't matter if the square root is first or second. The conjugate will always be the opposite of the second. Conjugate is always the opposite of the second. If that bothers you, then it's not the square root. Remember, addition is commutative, so you can rearrange your terms. You can write it as either of those final answers. The bottom one comes from the fact that 2 is a GCF. The denominator is 4. So 2 and 4 simplify to halves. You cannot just simplify the 2 and the 4 on the square root of 5. You must simplify it with the 2 at the end as well. Drill. Homework is on the remaining pages.